friends, welcome back to Work Life Harmony. So this episode kind of wraps up a fun series. You all may not have realized it was a series uh, that I have been doing here for the month of July. July, again, is my birthday month. It's also my daughter's birthday month. Uh, And so I have used this month to share some things that I really love, that I'm really passionate about. And I've been offering an amazing gift to you guys all month long with the Top Planner Bundle. So where I want to wrap things up today is to share, you know, for, for this little fun month is to share with you my top five favorite planning supplies. So yes, planning is one of my favorites. Um, I am also a huge fan of the movie Elf and I always love to grab the little funny meme of him saying, I just love planning. Planning is my favorite. That's how I feel every week when I sit down to create my weekly plan. One, because it is a system and process I've been doing for years. And so it's just second nature. But second, what it does for me in terms of setting me up for success for the week is amazing. Um, but before I sit down to create my weekly plan, there are five tools or resources that I have with me always. And that's what makes my weekly planning work so well. So I wanted to share these with you. Um, Some of you may be familiar with some of them. Some of them may be new in things that um, you'll be able to look in the show notes. I've got links to uh, most of these that I'm gonna be sharing as well. First and foremost, you all know what I'm going to say, my top planner, right? Uh, I am a paper planner user. And so obviously I'm gonna use the planner that I built that I love. So if you are a paper planner user, again, I've got a lot of episodes around there about finding the right paper planner, but first and foremost is my top planner. This is my command center. It's what I look at each and every day that reminds me what I plan to be doing and when I'm doing it. And throughout the course of the week, as things change, as life tosses me a curveball, new pop-up tasks come or whatever, they all get put intentionally into either an appointment or a task for the week inside of my top planner. So the top planner is my foundational for everything when it comes to planning. Um, Now, here's a little fun fact I've never shared that the top planner actually comes with three different binder colors. There's a light pink, there's a, a soft gray, and then there's a dark charcoal gray. I actually have all three binders and through different seasons, I just change them out. So right now it's July, it's summer, it's everything. I've got the pink binder out and that is the one that I am using. Um, now I will say one of, one of the things I love inside the binder as well. And if you have a weekly, if you have a paper planner, you need something that functions as a bookmark for you. That makes it easy for you to open as your, your week at a spread. Um, and so for me with the top planner, you actually get some bookmark that peeks out up at the top and also doubles as a ruler and it clicks in so you can easily find where you're at. So that's my first is my top planner. Now, the second tool that I can't live without that might be confusing because you'll be like, wait a minute, but I'm going to explain it is my Google calendar. Well, actually I use iCal uh, because I'm a Mac person, but it syncs with my Google. So why in the world am I pulling up an electronic calendar when I just told you that my go-to for everything is my paper planner? Well, I run a very digital business, um, and so many of us today live in a world where we are always making appointments and meetings with others, right? Where someone sends you a Zoom meeting invite in the form of a calendar invite. So before I say yes to anything, I'm looking at my paper planner. But then if someone's like, hey, Megan, I want to, you know, can you come give a presentation here within our organization, you know, next month on whatever date, if I say yes, then they typically send me a Zoom or whatever platform we're going to use electronically, right? And then it gets added to my Google Calendar. So whenever I'm making appointments like that, I am writing them into my command center, my paper planner. But what I don't have to do is like, write down you know, the entire URL for the Zoom link, right? It lives in my Google uh, calendar. I'll just keep saying Google because that's the one we all kind of know and love. So this way, when I sit down to do my weekly planning, I'm pulling up my Google calendar as just a quadruple check 
that nothing is showing up there that I whoops said yes to and didn't go into my paper planner. Um, and I also leverage a Google Calendar as a, as a resource for people. You know, I can share a calendar link out for someone to be able to book time with me. So I do have to, that's you know, in my Google Calendar, I'm blocking off times where I cannot be available. So I use it as a tool, as a planning tool, but it is not my go-to for my command center. Now you may be completely electronic and only have that electronic calendar and not be paper and not use a paper one, right? I went through a, a pretty long stage of life where, where I was because I was in front of the computer, felt like 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that's the second one is that's how I use my, you know, my Google calendar. Now, my third favorite planning supply is a free piece of software called Trello. I talk about it often. I actually cover in-depth training about Trello inside of my entire top program. Trello for me is, is my organizational tool. It is, I don't lean in on the calendaring aspects of Trello. Trello is my central repository to remember, juggle, prioritize, estimate, et cetera, all the things. Uh, my top framework has nine components to it. One of it is on the organizational area is centralized. So Trello is, is the piece of software that I use to put all of the information that I have got to remember and then figure out how the heck to get it into my plan for a week. So all of a sudden, uh, you know, maybe I have a great idea. Oh, I want to remember to do blah, blah, blah. I add it into my big master backlog in Trello. Or if a you know, request comes in, as I mentioned, I get a lot of requests to go give presentations in people's company. Um, then I'll add the item into Trello. Hey, make sure that the slide deck and you know, your presentation, everything is ready to go. So that is where, the, when I leverage this as a planning tool, a planning supply, when I sit down to do my weekly planning, I am pulling up that list that houses, you know, hashtag all the things, all the stuff that we're juggling and it's in priority order so that when I'm laying out my plan for the week, I'm looking at all of the things and, and strategically intentionally figuring out when I'm going to get the ones that need to get done for this upcoming week done. So instead of having to pull up an app from a phone and you know the index card over here and the post-it notes over here and the scrap paper in the car and the one shoved in the bottom of my bag, it's just Trello. So I really, really, really love Trello as a, as a input, as a tool for my planning. Now, the fourth one is my favorite product ever. It sounds silly, but oh my gosh, it's life-changing. Um, I've got a link to it in the show notes so you can see the exact ones that I use. Um, but the, the friction erasable felt tip pens. They are actually really fine point. I write with a fine point. I, I still write with mechanical pencil. I use the, the 0.5 lead. I, I really like a fine point when I write, especially in a planner. Um, and my issue historically was always, I always used a pencil because life happens. Life throws me a curveball. I've already had to change three things, three appointments on my plan for this week. And so I always would write my weekly plans in pencil because I needed the ability to be able to erase and move things and not just have it be a scribbled mess. But I also love color coding. It's so powerful when you are juggling multiple hats to really give you a good framework for your week and to help you put the right structure in place when we can kind of group together those roles. So I use, I, thankfully someone introduced me, I don't remember who, and I hate that I don't remember it, but someone introduced me to the friction erasable fine tip pens. And friends, they really do erase. I mean, they really do erase. It's not like it smears and leaves a mess and they dry like instantly as I write with them in my planner. So this allows me to, I have a color that represents work, I'm sure you all can guess what that is, uh, but if, if I share a picture of my weekly plan with you, all the stuff that's in there in pink is work-related for the pink bee. Um, anything in there that is blue is more like more of my mom slash family hat. 
And then I have a, a different color and I haven't landed on one. I love yet. I keep circling through different ones for that time for just me. That is just Megan time. And now I have women in the program that will use you know, more than just three colors. Uh, if they have larger families or, you know, they're serving in multiple businesses, et cetera. So I, I do all of my weekly planning on the appointment section in my colored pens. Um, and then I still just use my mechanical pencil for, for the task section. Uh, and then finally, my fifth planning supply, uh, this is what I don't really talk about much on the podcast because I, I really like to spend a lot of our time here talking on really pragmatic tactical things that you can use. Um, but I have a annual planning guide. Last year was the first year I actually shared this out um, and all the women in the Planapalooza community um, had the, the 2022 annual planning guide. I am, we are actually building a bigger, better, most amazing one for 2023. I'll be sharing more about that later uh, in some future episodes. But the, the annual planning guide is where I do my strategic higher level long-term planning. So the top planner is truly a weekly planner. It's what I look at every day to remind me, what am I doing? When am I doing it? What did I say I was going to do? But my annual planning guide is where all of the high level goal setting, future planning, those uh, larger, you know, kind of projects that you're trying to figure out, how can I fit this in that may span multiple months? Um, and I, you know, it's a lot to talk about with how the structure of the annual planning guide works, but it kind of guides you through a process where we do annual planning. And then there are, we break it down into some high level quarterly plans as the year progresses. And so when I sit down to do my monthly planning, I am referencing that, that high level quarterly plan that I do once a quarter and I, it all gets netted down into one page. So when I'm just sitting down for a regular weekly planning session, my annual planning guide is not with me every week, but every month uh, there are certain parts of it that, that you use for reference and marrying those two together that brings that strategic planning in with the more tactical day-to-day -day planning. And I've always been very honest about, you know, when you're looking for where you want to do your plans, these planners that say we do everything, right? You're going to do your goal setting. You're going to be, um, you know, tracking your meals and your health goals and your, and your visions and, and your quarterly planning and your this and your that. And then it's also going to tell you what you're going to do every day. The only way I could think of a planner actually serving all of those is that the thing would probably have to be like five inches thick if it were to fit an entire year in it. So this is why I very intentionally separate my daily, what am I doing with the top planner versus the one I don't need to look at every day on that strategic side in the annual planning guide. Um, so as the year, as you know, we get closer to wrapping up this calendar year, um, you all are gonna be able to start seeing more about this annual planning guide. Um, but again, these are my five must have planning supplies. Uh, in nicer weather, I tend to go sit outside on my back porch to do my planning. And so for me, I grab my planner, I grab my erasable pens and my pencils. I go ahead and grab my little laptop under my arm just to be able to pull up Trello and my Google calendar. And then if I'm doing you know, more of that strategic level, I grab my annual planning guide as well. Um, and I usually make myself a nice snack because why not? So here's what I would love from all of you. Um, I would love for you to share this episode out and then come back and tell me Easiest place to just shoot me a message is on Instagram at Megan Sumrall. Shoot me a DM and let me know if there are any additional must have planning supplies that are your go-to because if there is something like, I didn't know about the friction pens until a few years back, you may have something that you absolutely love um, that maybe you're holding out and you're not sharing with me. So happy planning. Have a fantastic week.